sometimes when you're looking at a video uh, just like this video that i'm going to talk about right here i i have to be honest with you i am baffled with the things that people come up with i think um sometimes people their mind is so far or so far removed from having a capability of reading the bible and just letting the bible interpret the bible to a point where it's almost scary listening to them and i think this video this video right here exemplifies that exactly it's the reality show with daily christian commentary videos for the first time over here do be sure to check out the other videos that are down in the pin comments and man thems will see you over there <laughs> like the video does help it out with the algorithm as i stated other videos done today down in the pin comments okay murut what are we saying what what is this message that we are here for what's what's been said Let, what's new <laughs> that's, that's what we are saying He's talking about cycle. Okay. I can give you the significance of period pains. So you're gonna give them the significance of period pains. Okay. I touch a three day school where it represents the Trinity of God. So if it takes three days, it represents the Trinity. It comes there to us so far. Whatever pain you are going through, you have the sun, the spirit, and the father. You have the sun, the spirit, and the father. You have the sun, the spirit, and the father. And I'm not for this. You have the sun, the spirit, and the father. I'm a daughter of my mama, Mary. You have the sun, the spirit, and the father. <laughs> you know, it's a danger to guesswork when you're like when you're just guessing on you just you see this type of preaching it's called isogetical preaching so basically a person takes whatever idea they want to use and they try to apply it to the bible and a lot of times when you do that you you limit the full scale understanding of what the scripture is trying to paint and that's exactly what this pastor has just done right now okay so we're gonna go back there in the beginning is a lot hmm, this <laughs> are you sure about these ideas you're out here pulling because um i have to be honest with you just a second uh, the things that he's saying here are a bit troubling but i think the most part of what he says it gets it gets out of control a lot of times when you or when we are not being given the full sight of what's been said so he says the pains that people face they represent the trinity that's his explanation okay and then he tries to explain it using the trinity and so i want to just go back to that there and let's hear him out oh <laughs> let's hear him out here yeah. my pc had just decided to go off on the side right okay that presents a problem problem number one he says period so someone might say no he's putting himself within the feet in the foot of a woman right 
Yeah, there's already an entire crisis with identity out there. We don't need that. It's women that go through periods. I don't need to have a man or a preacher trying to phrase a man into uh, a time of difficulty is in pain of periods. It's not the same thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay? Okay? It's not the same thing. My troubles I still face, the woman still might have those same troubles. Loss of a mother, loss of a child, loss of parents and stuff. These are things that we share in, but the pains of a woman's periods are not the same with the... So, right there, we have a problem. Because now, you are, conf you are conflating. Is it conflating? Conf uh -huh. The word that you can tell me that in the conversation. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll Google it after. But you can tell me that in the, question, in the comment section. Conflating. Is it conflating? Conflu uh -huh. <laughs> Basically, you are nullifying the significance of those pains to a woman's body because they mean something to her but to a man i don't have that so you're creating a problem there uh, when i'm to tata three days or tata the sun the spirit and the fun yeah. whatever pain you are going through you have the sun the spirit yeah. and the father i guess in the trouble you have the sun the spirit and the father wait Another problem. You see, when he makes the Trinity a subject of pains that last three days, he is creating a God version that the Egyptians used to have. He's a God that is only described by human experience. I'm just showing highlights here and there, right? He's, 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 he's describing a God that is only described by human experience. Now, someone might hear that and say, what's the problem with that? You see, I was watching one theologian yesterday, and he was saying, you know, when you look at a, a most of the descriptions of how the, the Jews spoke about God, they didn't really focus so much on the Christian version of thing, which is, uh, Jehovah Jireh, God provider. Actually, I was talking about Jesus. Says Jesus doesn't use those particular terms. Okay, not that we can't, but he was saying Jesus didn't look at God with those terms. The need, okay, Jireh, the healer, provider. You see, God didn't. Jesus didn't refer to God like this because you then phrase God only on human experience. Or your only way of knowing or describing God is on the basis of human experience. You create a problem. God is beyond human experience. And so you can think about it and think a little bit more deeper. Maybe when we go back into the live streams, we'll go back and we'll deal with that. But I just wanted to highlight, you create a problem because you are now letting the idea of the human experience. So basically, you can't describe God outside of having a certain experience. I had a need God provided. And so I'm going to describe. Nothing wrong with calling God that, okay? Be very clear. There are some people that go extreme. It's that we don't want to have that type of... Because now he's saying, yeah, God, the Father, the Son, that is because of the three days pain. It creates a problem. But anyways, we don't have that much time to deal with. But I just wanted you to think around that. Continue. It's the Lord of Hananiah. You have the Son, the Spirit, and the Father. And I'm a little funny. You have the Son, the Spirit, and the Father. I'm a daughter of my mama, Mary. You have the Son, the Spirit, and the Father. So... You see, what is just done right now? It's a very big problem. A lot of people have this tendency, the same tendency of only describing God within human experience, which is why a lot of people have this God healing. You know, they, when they think about God, they think about healing and prosperity. They think about having a, a well-structured life. It's because the only way they can describe God 
It's on the basis of human experience. God is beyond your experience. God is beyond what you're experiencing. And so, if only, I'm now going to describe God, yeah, I have three days of pain. A trinity. <laughs> it's human experience that's describing God. You create a problem. You have a God that now can be, it is a, it's a, it's a Hindu version of God because it now needs God uh, to come uh, to a point of, you know, we have, we have hunger. You see, even the Nigerian versions of God, uh, if you think about it, the gods of maize meal, the god of beauty with the Greeks, uh, the god of uh, destruction with Shiva. You have the you, all these things, all these different. They are all gods that are that are all named or described by human experience. People that go to church for healing, what not, miracles. They are describing God on human experience. The Bible says, "In the beginning, God." And so, before experience, in the beginning, God. So before you could, before we even put time in the beginning, God, it means something. So what is done here, from a theological perspective, you know, when the Bible says, "Do not put the Bible within private interpretation," this is what it's talking about. Because you'll enter into error. I don't describe God on what I need, on what I want. Okay? Yes, Go Jehovah is Jaira. Jehovah is Nisi. Yes. Chico Poco, as, as one as the ones called him. Okay? God that <laughs> creates a way where there is no way. So it is very clear we call him that because of, but these don't describe him. They're not a full description of him because if you just have God who is a miracle worker, you, you only are now based on the human experience. There's a need for a miracle. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Okay? And so. It's it's a it sounds like a lighter subject like ah no you know he's just overly thinking but he's not thinking through you know sometimes you when you have a theological idea it helps to think through it <laughs> by thinking through it I mean you have to go through all the levels of of the meaning of what you have just placed if you are putting the three days you are making God's dis defined description of being present in your situation the basis of I have a situation. You see, because, you see, I'll give you an example. A last example, actually, before my Lord shading kicks in. When the Hebrew boys were about to be put in the fire, they say whether he comes, whether he saves us from the fire or not, he is still God. You see, that's a God that's not described by the fire. He, you see, this God, he cannot be defined by the fire. This God is not going to be defined because I have sinned. He's Savior. Uh -uh. He is beyond that. He is it all. Without him was not anything. You, do you understand? You create a problem. But it's a it's a more of a theological subject. We can have that talk on Saturday. Y'all tell me what you think. But some of these things, when you think them, Pastor, think through it so that you don't create errors like this. <laughs>